You know what else I'm looking forward to? Well, I know what I'm looking forward to right now because it's the Monday of the second week of Advent, December the 11th. Our word for today is rise. Rise is our word for today. And here to talk about it, the one, the only, Father Mark Davis. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Ron, how are you? Well, I'm, uh, despite uh, reports, I'm fine. David? I am fabulous. It is so awesome to be here. So, you know, so it's Advent. And, you know, we were all raised with Advent being uh, supposed to be about light in darkness. I mean, Mm. you know, even as little kids with the Advent wreath, it's always about darkness, you know, and then having light little bit by little bit growing. Mm. But I don't think I really understood totally. This is about the darkest time of the year. Mm. You you know, Mm. the days are short. It's dark. It's getting cold. All the vegetation has died. And this is supposed to symbolize those times in our lives where we see darkness and hopelessness. Mm. And this is all supposed to be God reminding us that there is hope coming ahead, you know, for us, that the light is coming, that our Savior is coming, that Jesus is coming, that Jesus didn't always already only come in time, but every day that it's coming, that don't despair in the darkness. And then, you know, it reminds me of that story of that guy who had the dream and he, he was pouring his heart out to God and about all of his frustrations and his like, where are you, God? Why haven't you come yet? And I, I just have so many worries of this world. And God says, you got to remember. And this is what Paul said, or Peter said in yesterday's reading. Mm. So you got to remember that for me, my ways are not your ways. And for me, you know, a thousand years is like a second, mm. you know, but, 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 but God, I have so many bills and so many words. You got to remember that for me, you know, a million dollars is like a penny, mm. you know, and, and then the guy say, Hey, God, you think I got to have a penny? And he says, of course, in just a second. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. Okay. <laughs> Four so generations joke, later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the word is rise. Mm. And then it talks about, um, it, it comes from that gospel about this, these friends bringing their, their friend who was paralyzed to Jesus. They couldn't get in and they went through the roof. Hmm. Now, I have another story, and this story is from the young people have no idea what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, category. there we go. And we <laughs> like so, you that know, on this so, so for both of you, name one thing off the top of your head that you think someone like under 30 or under would have no idea what it is. Um, happy days. Ooh, and I'm thinking like mm. a telephone. Oh, there you, you go. know, a mm. typewriter. Yeah, right. Phone booth. Right. So. Guys, what do you call a book that we don't have anymore in which you would look up synonyms? Oh, the the, the, the Saras. Yeah, the Saras. Yeah. And what's the guy's name? Poor Roger. Remember, everybody had Poor a copy Roger. of Roger's oh, yeah, the Saras. Right, yeah. And then so, a truck. Now, this is from 50 years ago. <laughs> a truck loaded with thousands of copies of Roger's Thesaurus. Oh, there you go. And okay. remember, a thesaurus, for those of you listening who's younger than us, is a book that you would look up a word and there'd be all these words. And it was these about words. eight inches, th- 12 exactly. inches thick. Yeah. So a truck loaded with thousands of copies of Roger's Thesaurus crashed yesterday, losing its entire load. Witnesses were stunned, startled. A gasp, <laughs> taken aback, <laughs> stupefied, confused, shocked, rattled, paralyzed, dazed, bewildered, mixed up, surprised, awed, go. dumbfounded, nonplussed, oh, flabbergasted, it. astounded, amazed, confounded, <laughs> astonished, overwhelmed, horrified, numbed, flummoxed, <laughs> speechless, perplexed, and gobsmacked. Oh, gobsmacked. Oh, there you go. Uh, and gobsmacked. Meanwhile, meanwhile, <laughs> Those waiting for the shipment were at a loss for words. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you take us back, right? Because we all had one. You had oh, to yeah. have one. And it was a wonderful tool to use. Now actually. you just have to, you have coming, to yeah. plug it into Google. Yeah. So That's this idea <laughs> that they were at a loss for words. Mm. So this reminds me of the paralyzed man in the gospel because – 
I think in general, I don't know what your guys' background and study is, but one principle of Jesus's miracles and signs and physical cures mm. was that every time usually that he did a cure as a sign of God's power to bring us healing in a spiritual similar way. Mm. So, you know, when, when you've got all of these people, including the scribes and the Pharisees and people who were brought up in the Jewish religion, and then it became just about the externals mm. and not about those externals bringing them to the living God, they were blinded to who Jesus was. Mm. So then when he cured a blind person, then it would say that, look, God can cure your, your physical, your spiritual blindness to open up to God's loving creation, even though you're still oppressed by the Romans, etc. Mm, mm. So when, when someone, you know, we, when he cured someone being deaf, it's the same thing, or leprosy. So then the question becomes, what does it mean to be spiritually paralyzed? Mm. If the raise, if he's saying rise up, what does it mean to be spiritually paralyzed? And to ask God today to be able to Heal us in our relationship with God for our spiritual paralysis, those times and those areas in our lives that we are stuck. And more importantly, who do we know who is spiritually paralyzed that don't know who they are and whose they are and what they're to do, and they just don't know what to do, or maybe they do know what to do, and they don't have the courage or the spirit to do it. So, friends, today we pray for God to help us with their spiritual paralysis. And like those friends of that man that did anything they could to get him to Jesus, because they knew if they got him to Jesus, that Jesus would cure him. Lord, let us bring our friends and people to Jesus so they can be unstuck in their spirit. God bless you. Have a good week.